Welcome to Our Heritage this month. We start this month, and we'll do it for the several months following, we're going to focus on education. We are preparing an education exhibit in Coffee County at the museum here uh, from 1854 right up to 1970. So we thought we would get some people who have experienced some of the past educational activities and events and just survival and interview them. And today, my special guest is Mr. Charlie Ingram. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, when did you come to Coffee County to teach? I came to Coffee County in 1957 in September. Uh, I'd worked eight years in Waycross, mm -hmm. and I heard of a vacancy over here, and I came over, and Dr. Thompson <laughs> told me uh, if the board goes along with me, you're going to be the man I hired. I said, Dr. Thompson, let me tell you, I'm not coming over here to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, well, I said, I'm not coming over here to raise money. I'm coming here to teach kids. Right. And that's what I, I planned to do. And where I, did you teach? You I taught teach? in Waycross for uh, eight years. And then in Coffee County? Then, then I came in Coffee County, and I, I was a teaching principal in a little eight-teacher elementary school. There was a lot of that in the early 50s. Yeah. And I was the last of the teaching principals uh, because after that they start making the schools a little larger and they had principal and assistant principal. Now, I still stayed at Mary Hayes. It's still Mary Hayes? Yeah. <laughs> and the one fellow told me, his friends that Charlie Ingham doesn't have any business in Broxton. He's too smart to be in Broxton. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you don't act like people in Broxton need somebody smart around them. <laughs> And I'm delighted the fact that, that I had a chance to, to stay here uh, because I, I think I did some things to help some people. Yeah, well, and I you, know you did. You can't help all of them, no. <laughs> but, but you try. <laughs> and I have one boy now that uh, he sees me every day. He says, Mr. Ingram, you helped me. You helped me. I said, yeah, you came back from Miami, thought you were the baddest thing in the world. And I had to tell you that, no, that ain't going to work. <laughs> God, he wanted all the little girls to like it, but he thought if he was bad, they would. I said, no. He went home and told his aunt about it. And in the process of telling his aunt about it, uh, she said, the man just told you right. That's all he told you. And of course, he had stayed out of school two or three days because of what I said. And then after she told him that, he went back. And one of his teachers asked me, what do you do to that boy? I said, I didn't do nothing but just tell him he was going by it the wrong way. She said, well, he changed. That's I, said, well, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, so. How long were you at Mary Hay? I was at Mary Hay's 20 years. Uh, were you principal for most of those years? Or? Uh, yeah, principal. And uh, well, actually, when we integrated, uh, I was sort of like the assistant. But right. and all, all those. Uh, and it made, made, made a great deal of difference, uh, uh, actually. I, I know when we integrated, Mr. Davis actually said, okay, I want you two to work together mm -hmm. and plan whatever happened. And when y'all come out, be together rather than split. Right. But it didn't quite work out that way. Never does. Never does. <laughs> so I, I, told, I told the other fellow, I said, uh, let's go and talk to Mr. Davis. He said, okay. Uh, but he never would get an appointment. So at one of our meetings, I told Mr. Da Mr. Davis, we need to see you so you can tell him what you told me. Yes. <laughs> and so he said, okay, yeah. And after the meeting, he said, come on in the office. We're in the office. And I told him, he said, I want you all to work together in this kind of thing. And I finally told him, the fellow, that you are one of those that can't tell anybody yes or no. Ask you about something, you say yes, then next minute to change your mind. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not used to that. If I tell you yes, I mean yes. Mm -hmm. If I tell you no, I mean no. And it's, it's, and he just, well, actually, he just couldn't do it. We had a, a combination of library and lunchroom right. with a folding door in between it. And in the process, uh, the kids who did not eat sat over in the library part. The kids who ate lunch sat over on the other side, and I said, no, I don't want those kids. They're smelling the food, and they're not going to get any of it. 
and I got out and started raising the garden. Uh, the area I had, uh, I picked up to raise the garden in, asked a fellow, could I ha uh, use it for a garden? He said, yes, and my neighbor told me I'd never seen anybody raise anything in that spot. And I said, well, I'm gonna try. And of course, uh, I knew a little bit about egg, so I had uh, a friend of mine to come in and subsoil it. Then we went back and uh, this could, uh, and then we lay off the rose and plant it. And by the end of the summer, he told me, I ain't never seen nobody raise that much food <laughs> in that place. He said, uh, you ain't supposed to be no farmer. I said, no, I don't have to be. <laughs> but you see, I got, he said, yeah, you got the stuff out there Tell you got tired and quit. <laughs> But, but it, it, it's, it's a thing, if you know about something, then you, then you use it. Right. And later on, because actually when I got there, only about half of the kids were eating in school. And what was happening is the principal was taking the flour and making cookies, selling cookies and ice cream at lunchtime. Oh, gracious. So you know they're going to eat cookies and ice cream rather than lunch. And uh, finally, the uh, fellow from Alpha Dublin asked me one time, said, you don't ever buy any weenies or bologna? I said, only time I buy weenies is uh, by the time we're going to have a Halloween carnival. Mm -hmm. And if we have some left over, then I have a uh, weenie with baked beans and weenie with franks. And, uh, and he kept talking. I said, well, can you tell me that a weenie has the same kind of ingredients that the hind roast that you sell me. Because I, I bought the hind roast at 79 cents a pound deboned. Yeah. I told him I have no waste there. Mm -hmm. I, I said, but all that, but the weenie has a lot of oatmeal in it. <laughs> I, I said, I can buy oatmeal cheaper than that. <laughs> and in the process, though, uh, I began to um, get farmers to raise some vegetables for me. And we began to sort of feed all the kids that we possibly could. Right. And that was before they had uh, lunches from Title I. But it, it, it turned out that there was one girl during the summer, she would tell her, uh, I'm like, I hate to see Mr. Ingham coming, because I know he got some work. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd gather peas and get her up there. And uh, John MacGyver uh, did a great job of raising uh, stuff for me. And I asked him, I said, John, how much I got to buy the fertilizer? He said, you ain't got to buy nothing, just get it. There you go. And uh, he later on told somebody, I've never seen anybody go out in a field at 12 o'clock, hot as it is, with no hat on, gathering vegetables. <laughs> I said, did I get, he said, you got everything out there. <laughs> and plus, in fact, another thing I did, over at uh, Osceola, around Osceola, they grew potatoes. Yeah. And all the cubs they would leave in the field. Yeah. I sent my janitor over there with some boys to bring a truckload of them back. Oh. <laughs> and then, and what I did, I, we, in our boiler room, uh, I put them in the boiler room because they were run by electricity. Right. And, and that's all they stayed dry. <laughs> and I, I, we, had, we had potatoes all through <laughs> during the year. <laughs> But, but it's an amazing fact, and, and uh, some of the kids tell me, no, that's one thing about you, but think what, you try to make sure we ate. That's right. Now, I, I refused a few parents because they didn't follow the rules. Right. Um, it said that, you know, you, you fill out paper, and half, half of them would fill out the paper and said there was only one person in, in the house working. And I knew three or four was working. <laughs> And for that reason, I refused it. Yeah. And uh, they, they said, you I said, yep. I said, because you didn't fill it out legally, you know? Yeah. And if you go do it like that, then you, you, you're hooking the whole program. Right. And, and it, as, as it turned out, though, uh, they, they began to consent. Go ahead. And one lady told me, I can't do this. I told her, if you will feed one of your children, I will take care of the rest of them. She had five. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. I'll go to the commissary and get some. I said, what you gonna get? Peanut butter and jelly and some light bread. I said, for the fees that you pay for the peanut butter and jelly, 
and light bread, I, I, I'll feed your children. I can't do that. <laughs> I said, well, you're going to have to pay for it at the commissary. Oh, why not that? He said, no, I'll go cook. I said, OK, then I can't feed your children. Now, what happened is that the children came in and said, Mr. Ingham, can we eat lunch? I said, yeah. You never denied a child. I never denied. No, I might deny a parent, but never a child. <laughs> and they said, what? I said, I never denied a, a child if they needed to eat. And that was one girl in school. She came to school, especially after integration. And she had a, got her fingers cut in an auger uh, because uh, they worked on a chicken farm. And I think the, uh, she, somehow she got her hand cut and, and she got a couple of fingers cut off. And she kept her hand always hid. And, and she would come in in the morning. And most times she'd come in, she would say she was, uh, her stomach hurt. So I said, your stomach hurt, and I finally asked her, did you eat this morning? She said, no. I said, well, go down to the lunchroom and tell the lady they fix you uh, something to eat. Uh, get your bowl of oatmeal and some cereal, I mean, uh, some fruit. And that way, and, and she got to the point that she come in and her stomach was hurt. But the day she was sitting in the office, she told me, Mr. Ingham, Delta Dawn is playing, and that's, and my, my favorite song, at least yeah, that's one of them. I said, well, what's the other one? And the other one was, Somebody Ought to Care. <laughs> and I said, here's the child in third grade, and two of the saddest songs I know of, she, she said they're her favorites. And so I actually, I did. I, I stopped making sure that she and her sister in the morning uh, ate. Right. Plus the fact they came to school smelling like the chicken house. But they've been picking up eggs. Mm -hmm. I sent them, to, sent my uh, secretary to town with, and bought them some things that they could wear. Mm -hmm. And in the process, I said, "Now, when uh, I said get back, take them in the boiler room, get you a tub of water, <laughs> and wash them up, Damn. and put them on." And the teachers found out what I, I was doing, so then they decided to get them a little cosmetic kit and all this. And I said, now, before they go home, tell them to change clothes and wear them up. Right. <laughs> and, and, and in the process, this girl left and she went over to the high school. And she, after she got over there, she just got despondent again. I said, oh, well, they aren't taking care of her. But she also, she stopped school in about seventh grade, got married, and I saw her at Harvest one day and she told me, uh, well, she ran through the turnstile uh, and pushed somebody out the way to get, get on there. And she came and hugged my neck, and her husband came over. What you doing hugging him? She said, this was my principal when I was in third grade. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and the process, he, he sort of eased off a little bit. But she said, yeah, he, he was my principal, and I always would like to hug him. Uh, and and it, it, because he, he took care of us. And I said, well, that's what I'm here for, you know? I had another boy came down from South Carolina and I went in the classroom and the teacher introduced, this is Mr. Ingram, he's our principal. The boy told me, he ain't no principal. Why he ain't no principal? He laughed all the time. <laughs> And uh, she said, he said, where I come from, that probably never smile. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone laugh. I, I said, well, OK, and I, I, I teased about it. And I said, Rolla, uh, I'm, I'm smiling now. <laughs> <laughs> Let him smile. Yeah. Where'd you go after Mary Hayes? Uh, well, act, after Mary Hayes, uh, well, actually, when they integrated, I was, uh, worked at both okay. schools. Okay. Uh, I had to teach a class. One class at uh, the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, in Broxton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing about it is, <laughs> when Title One came in, they asked us to write a project. I wrote one for $300,000. <laughs> and Ms. Ross said, hey, we can't let you have that because we ain't going to get that much. <laughs> and I said, well, you told me to write a project. I wrote one. <laughs> 
And uh, from there, she started calling me Mr. Early Childhood Education because I wrote one for uh, Head Start, but not Head Start, for Daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> I had buses, and I, I had everything, teachers, and everything they needed. And, and another thing with the teachers is that if you ask for something, I want you to use it. Because some of them would get things, and I want that because somebody else had it. But they never use it. And if I found that you weren't using it, I gave it to somebody else who would use it. And they said, well, I said, no, it belongs to the school. It don't belong to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the same thing at the high school. I said, that's mine. I said, well, then show me the slip for you take it. Yeah. Because as far as I know, taxpayers pay for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I had to say, the first year I was here, uh, the other principal told me, if you need some fix, just send it on down to Griggs and uh, send it to the Dr. Thompson. I said, okay. And my uh, projector got out of whack, so I sent it down to Griggs and said, Dr. When the Dr. Thompson got the bill, he called me, Ingham, come here. <laughs> I got that, he started, well, he actually told me about how long he had been superintendent of, of the combined system and said well, the, how far was it in debt when he got in there. And said, so now I worked and got it out of debt and I want to stay out of debt. Don't spend no money unless I know about it. <laughs> I said, thank you, sir. I never told the fellow what he told me. <laughs> but but I, I did have to tell him. Uh, one of the fellows that uh, Dr. Cole said, uh, you gave him a bad check. And he said, that's going to the wrong thing. Don't give your boss a bad check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, but, but after that, I, I got the things I, I wanted. Because uh, I needed. The things that were needed, I, I got them. Uh, and uh, the area supervisor came by once and he said, how in the world can you get something new every time I come? So everybody said, Dr. Thompson is stingy. I said, well, all I do is ask her. I said, no, a lot of times he'll tell me, well, I can't do it now. Uh, I said, okay. I said, but when? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the one thing is uh, I, the typewriter we had, had some broken keys on it, the face of the keys. Mm -hmm. And when I was, ever I sent him a letter or something, I typed it on the well, broken right. Yeah. But I had borrowed one from my aunt in Albany that I'd used to write all the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart move. And, and, and he told me, uh, we're going to get a new driver from the office, and I'm sending you the one from up here. And it was a long carriage one. It said I could put stencils and everything. That's good. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> well, what about after, uh, did, did you teach in Broxton more than just that one class? No, at the high school, no, just one. one. Uh, I did um, coach the uh, boys' uh, baseball team uh, because um, the coach got, got sick mm -hmm. and uh, I, I coached the boys' baseball team. Uh, and it turned out that the principal over at Nichols told me, uh, Ingram, these boys play a whole lot of different games than they used to. They don't win everything. But uh, if you get one or two runs, you better get some more because they're going to come back on you. And he said, uh, there used to be a time that you got two or three runs on them, they just give up. Right. So, but now they don't. They don't yeah. And one of the boys told me, he said, out of all the years I played ba baseball, my arm always hurt. But this year my arm didn't hurt a bit. I said, "Well, okay, I took care of you. Okay. You know, uh, I let, I didn't let you play with uh, bad balls and bats. Right. Uh, and uh, the little fun they gave me, uh, I took it down to Western Auto and bought all the balls and bats I could with it. Mm -hmm. and, and somebody said, "Well, I said, yeah, if a ball gets wet, we put it in, in an incinerator. A bat breaks, we put it in an incinerator." Because uh, I don't want, want to hurt you. I said, my aim is not to hurt you, but it's to help you. Right. And uh, I went to uh, Lake City uh, to uh, act, at least Lakeland, to actually uh, coach the team. And the coach said, I said, you came down here to beat me, didn't you? I said, yeah, I tried. <laughs> I said, the only thing I can tell you is that my son and two or three others, they made, they, 
got that one inning, they will make errors. And that's what, that's what would happen. They made, made errors, and then that's how y'all beat me. <laughs> he said, I know you were trying to beat me. I said, I was trying to beat you. <laughs> that's Yeah. Uh, and when did you retire? I retired in uh, 1979. And from, brought from Mary? Mary, Mary, Mary Hayes. Hayes. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. And well, we have found, I will confirm, when Dr. Thompson became superintendent in Coffee County, yeah. they had $600 in the treasury. Yeah. $600, and they had to close schools because they didn't have enough money to pay it for so many weeks hey. that one year. But after that, he was steady building it up. Um, there was also a big discrepancy in textbooks and supplies for black schools versus white schools at that time. Do you well, remember I, that? I, I, I never experienced that here. I did in Albany when I was in school. I was when I went to school in Albany. Right. Uh, we got all most of the hand and hand down books. And but you didn't have that problem. I didn't have that. this that problem here. Uh, Matter of fact, uh, on one occasion, Ms. Fry had told me, Anchorman, you didn't order your, your library books. I said, I didn't. I said, did you give me an order? She said, I thought I told you. I said, well, Ms. Fry, if you did, I don't remember it. <laughs> and it was false planning. And I was going to get, uh, she told me the amount with a 10% discount. Mm -hmm. I got the amount up, plus the 10% discount a little over. <laughs> And when I carried it up to her, she said, you, I said, yeah, I got it. Because when she told me, I was turning in my annual report. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about two more days. And I went back and I told all, all the teachers, drop what you have now and let's do this. And I started giving them cards. You go through your back of your book to all the, the and check the ones that you don't, you don't have and, and write out the whole thing on, on, on the cards. The, the publisher, the and the editor. I mean, and the uh, all the uh, things you need to the company and all. And we'll go down to the library and see how many we got. And although we don't have, uh, so it's out that we, we, we would try to order them. And and I had one teacher that actually she typed through your well. So uh, we said we'll give them the, the, the type up. And, and it turned out that before post planning was over, I had the order in, in the office on Miss Fry's desk. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you, I said, hey, I got it. And, and, and they, she said, I said, no, don't worry about how I got it, I got it. <laughs> but when uh, we integrated the schools, the teacher who came over to be librarian, teacher librarian, she said, how you get all these starred books? I said, I ordered them. She said, well, everybody else on the paper. I said, I don't want paper back. They ain't going to last for the year. You know, I, I'm ordering something. And, I, and then I showed her the f fact that the kids used them. Yes. Uh, uh, even from the Satilla Library, they, they bring books out there. Right. And uh, I, I, I document the fact that the kids used them. And at the end of the year, we had lost five books. That's amazing. And uh, this. <laughs> The lady who was on the on the uh, bus that brought the books around, she 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 said, "You lost five books." I said, "You got a twenty percent markup, so don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> and in the process, at the end of well, uh, the next year, those five books came back. I said, oh, "Here your five books," uh, and one of the books was uh, "A Girl Grows Up." I can remember quite well because. Uh, the, this girl took it and she passed around to all, all of those cousins and sisters <laughs> in the neighborhood. Well, did you have a librarian before integration? We, yeah, we had a, what we call a teacher librarian. Right. You had to have two jobs. Yeah, yeah. And my wife was a teacher librarian. And uh, I was trying to set up the way we could use the library. Uh, and I asked the teachers, to, let's see if we can't draw up a plan. And I waited two months on them to draw up a plan, and they didn't have one. So I said, well, here's how we'll do it. And my wife said, uh, well, I'm the librarian. I said, yeah, I said, but you're just in charge of the books because I let you be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the teachers said, 
uh, you see who I hate to talk to, Miss, <laughs> Miss Boss Lady. <laughs> we better get in line. <laughs> uh, when your wife worked, I worked, when I started in the library yeah. in the 70s, I worked with your wife. Yeah. We were on a couple of committees and all that. Very nice wife. Yeah. Who was the lady when integration that became a full time librarian? Is that what it was? Uh, no, oh, well, actually, uh, that was Miss, Miss, Miss uh, who was that? Uh, Miss, Miss, I can't think of the lady's name, no. But was it a full-time librarian job? Or was no, it just, just part-time. I, I was thinking to say, because most of them had to be double duty for right. years. Right, because uh, uh, my wife then worked in two schools. Right. Uh, she worked part-time in one and part-time in the other. And, uh, but, uh, because actually one of, one of them, when she came over to Mary Hayes part time, then she went to, uh, what's her, uh, I, I think, oh, oh. Miss Lott's, Miss uh, uh, Polk. Yeah. But uh, we got along, and, and, and like, like I said, when 3M came by selling things for elementary schools, right. it turned out that the um, man asked me about buying something. I said, I don't need to buy nothing. You don't need to buy anything. I said, no. He said, everybody else buys something. I said, I don't need to buy anything. So I took him in the office, and I had everything that three of them had for elementary school on the shelf. Then I took him to the library and said, now see, we got all these laminated and put on the file. If you want a picture uh, something about birds, you can come in and get any kind of bird you want. Uh, other animals, you know, all of it, and all you have to do is sign your name and bring it back. And then cross your name out when you got it back. And, 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 and it worked. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I thought when I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, Life was easier. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, actually, I said, if I talk now, they'd probably put me under the table. <laughs> I'm so glad you joined us today, Mr. Singham. I've learned so much. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Right. We'll see you right back. Welcome back. We're going to tighten up the show today with the ending of information. It's just going to be a plethora of information. The exhibit going, going now is Ada Slater. Uh, we also have a mini Georgia Tech exhibit. Those will run through August and into September. Um, August the 14th is the next Historical Society meeting. You do not have to be an officer to attend. Any member can attend the Historical Society meetings. Um, we, in this museum, we focus on 1970 and beyond, below, because uh, archivally and historically, 50 years is, if you're 50 years old, you're an antique, so we go from that reason. So you have to be more than 50 years old for it to be. We do have some short-term exhibits that we do that are more recent, but that's what we are focused on. Our new exhibit coming up is one I'm so excited about, and we heard a little bit about it today, is a history of public education in Coffee County. Um, this is from 1854 when we had them in brush arbors and lean-tos or in people's homes all the way up to 19. We're trying to stop about 70, 72. Um, that exhibit starts on September the 22nd. We are still needing pictures of some schools. Most schools are gone, 
and people did not take a lot of pictures of buildings in the past. If they had a camera, they took pictures of family because it was so expensive. But we do have one of Broxton and Nichols. I have one from Coffee High from 1954. If you have one of, no, I have Ambrose and Nichols, excuse me. I do not have one of the old Broxton School. Um, I have one, but you can't see it because it's so grainy. So we'd like that. We also are not focusing on athletics or that kind of stuff, but every school had a fundraiser. They had um, donkey basketball. They had country music groups come in and sing. And I remember when the fall festival or carnival was the thing, but it was every school had one. You didn't travel very far, so that was our entertainment. But if you have any pictures of those kind of things, of things in the classroom or field trips, I have a picture from West Green High School where they made a field trip to the radio station in Douglas. Those kind of things are what we're looking for. Also, if you have a picture group of a faculty, I have one of the faculties from the high school earlier in the years, and I also have one from 1914 at Douglas High School. They did a real pretty portrait of their faculty. Anything like that. Old report cards, teaching materials, any of that kind of thing of interest. Uh, you can always contact me at my phone number. It's on the website and everything else. It's 381-1135. Or you can drop by the museum and make a... We ask not for donations, but for loans. But keep in mind, the exhibit will last four months. It will actually go from September through Jan until January. So we appreciate your help with that. I need everything by September the 8th. Satilla Regional Library used to do history at high noon, the last Wednesday of the month at noon. Of course, that's why it's got its name. Uh, the museum and the historical society itself will be offering the same program, and we're going to do it here at the museum, and we'll start on September the 25th. Uh, we will have different programs. We would encourage you, if you're interested in history of any kind, please just come look and listen. We have a good time. We have some ideas for some programs, but if you have someone else you think would be good to come and talk to us about a topic, we'd be glad to entertain that. We like to have input. We did something last year, the Historical Society along with the Coffee Alliance for the Arts. We did a walk through the neighborhood at Douglas City Cemetery. It's not a ghost tour or any of that kind of stuff. We visited with people on their front porch, and they told us about their life. One of the people that I portrayed was Miss Mary May Woodruff. Miss Woodruff had five children. One lived to be four. The rest all died before the age of one. The day after her son, her baby was buried, her last one, her husband died two days later in Claxton, Georgia. Don't know why he was there, don't know anything. But they, those kind of people tell their life story, and it's very interesting. We're going to be doing that again this year. The Coffee Alliance for the Arts and us on October 13th and 14th. We're going to do it Friday afternoon and a Saturday morning. If you would like to portray somebody or be willing to portray somebody, or if you'd just like to help us with research, we'll be glad to have your help. We're going to, on September 5th program that we will do that week, we will have more ticket information and all that for you. But please mark your calendars for October 13th and 14th. We had a really good time last year. The next thing coming up at the museum is on November the 18th, the Wiregrass Art Artist Guild is going to have their feature artist reception here. I will be giving you more information on that, but please come by and support the arts in Coffee County. Um, sometimes I think we support athletics way more than we do anything else. Let's support these artists and what they do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have two new brand volunteers and we're so excited. Uh, we still need more. Volunteers keep the doors open to the museum. Plus they also help with historical society research and different things. Still need a Friday morning on two Friday afternoons in the fifth week of the month. We don't have those very often, but we don't have anybody for those, so some of us have to do double duty. If you know of someone or if you and a friend want to come and spend three hours up here at the museum keeping the door up and talking to people, 
let me know. We'd be glad to have you. I'm almost through, I promise. We have two projects that we're trying to, to close up. One is the Heritage Churches, churches before 1925 in Coffee County. Several people have said they've got things, but I haven't heard from them. If, if you have a picture of the original building, even if you don't, take a picture of the building now, and we need a little history of that church. We'd love to get that up instead of just waiting, waiting, waiting. So let's please get on the stick if you know somebody or somebody's church and get them to help us. Ms. Yvonne Clay is doing African American Leaders in Coffee County. We're kind of redoing that and rethinking that. Um, we're doing a section on the first, and we're also doing the rest of it on people that have given a productive life to the people in Coffee County. Not somebody that just did one thing or two things, but somebody that over years have made a change. I think Mr. In Mr. Ingram mentioned a while ago, Ms. Gwendolyn Lott. She was a principal. She taught piano lessons. She was the first black woman elected to the Board of Education. She was very active in church and in civil rights. She gave many years of her life to the children and the people in her community. Those are the kind of people we're looking for. So if you know of anybody or we have a process, you have to write all this up, and we'll take it to the committee, and they will select. Now, it won't be a static display. Uh, I may be up there this week, and somebody else may be up there next week. So it's going, we're going to roll it out so we have opportunity to showcase everybody. All righty? If you have any suggestions for the show, remember we're going to be continuing on the education theme for the next couple of months. So we'll be glad to take that information from you. And we hope you enjoy our program, and we hope you continue to watch. Till next month, God bless.